Hi everybody, my name is Sarah and this is Smoke and welcome back to Educating Adventures. Now my friend Smoke here is an amazing snake. She's a corn snake and we usually find this species in the eastern United States. Now today we are going to be learning about snakes, but we are not going to be learning about snakes that live on land. Instead, we are going to be learning about snakes that live in the ocean. So let's go ahead and get started. Today, we are learning all about sea snakes. As their name tells us, sea snakes are a group of snakes that spend their entire life, or almost their entire life, in the ocean. There's about 69 species of sea snakes, and they belong to a family of snakes known as elapids. Other members of the elapidae family include cobras, a very venomous, dangerous snake. And sea snakes are no different. Not only are sea snakes venomous, they are considered to be some of the most venomous snakes in the whole world. All sea snakes can be found in the Indo-Pacific Ocean. And that's just a really fancy way of saying where the Indian Ocean and the Pacific Ocean meet. Sea snakes are typically found in shallow, warm, coastal waters. In fact, we usually find them around coral reefs. We sometimes even call them coral reef snakes. Now, even though they live in water like a fish, they are true snakes. And all snakes are reptiles. But because they live a completely aquatic life, they have to have lots of adaptations to help them do so. Let's check some of those adaptations out. Land snakes, which we can also call terrestrial snakes, they have adaptations to help them move on land, whereas sea snakes have adaptations to help them move in water, adaptations to help them swim. Sea snakes have a long paddle-like tail. It's flattened, and that helps them to move water out of the way while they're swimming. They also do not have gills like a fish, so they cannot breathe underwater. However, their lungs are much larger than terrestrial snakes, and that has a couple jobs, but it helps them to hold their breath. They do have to surface every now and again to get more air, but the time in which they can stay underwater can vary on a lot of things. It can depend on the type of sea snake. It can depend on the size of the sea snake. It can also depend on how much energy the sea snake is using when it's swimming around under the water. Like almost all reptiles, sea snakes are cold-blooded also known as ectothermic. And this means they cannot regulate their own body temperature. When they need to warm up, they have to go lay near the surface of the water where it's a little bit warmer to get their body temperatures up. Like all snakes, sea snakes are carnivores, which means they are meat eaters. Of course they eat different food than snakes that live on land. Most of the food that they eat is fish, and some species even specialize in eating eels. And they have a real advantage when it comes to hunting in a coral reef. They have a long, skinny body they can use to move in and out of all the little spaces in the reef where the fish are hiding. Remember, they're also venomous, so once they bite their prey, it's pretty easy work after that. Also, like all snakes, Sea snakes smell with their tongue. And this is a little bit weird to think about happening underwater, but scientists think that sea snakes can smell even better than snakes that live on land. When they stick out their tongue, they pick up any little chemicals that are in the water, any little smell or taste particles, and that helps them to figure out where their food is. As we just discussed, Sea snakes have a lot in common with one another. However, scientists do break them up into two groups. We have true sea snakes and we have sea crates. And there's a couple key differences between these two groups. A sea snake, a true sea snake, has live offspring. They don't lay eggs. 
whereas a sea crate does lay eggs, which is what we normally picture for reptiles. The other key difference is that a true sea snake never leaves the ocean. They have their live offspring right in the ocean. They're able to swim around and defend themselves and hunt pretty quick after being born. A sea crate can and does go up onto land. And they do that specifically when it comes time to lay their eggs. They move their bodies up onto the beach and they lay their eggs underground. When the eggs hatch, the little baby snakes move right to the ocean. To help sea crates move on land, they actually have something in common with terrestrial snakes. They have wide, flat belly scales that help them slither across land. A true sea snake does not have those wide belly scales because they never need to slither across land. It's a great thing to learn that sea snakes are mostly not endangered. Most sea snake species, their populations are healthy and we're not worried that they are gonna go extinct. However, the biggest threat to sea snakes is actually a threat to their home, to their coral reef habitats where they live. Corals are being threatened by warming ocean waters and acidic ocean waters. So the best way that we can protect sea snakes is by protecting coral reefs. We can reduce our greenhouse gas emissions by using less energy or using renewable energy. We can also reduce our consumption, meaning reduce the number of things that we buy. Energy is used to make new products, so we can help reduce that energy use by buying products that have been used prior to us owning them. All right, make sure that you're getting all set up to help protect sea snakes and coral reefs. If you want to learn a little bit more about sea snakes and their home, be sure to check out our website where we have quizzes, activities, projects, and so much more. And thank you guys so much for joining me today on our educating adventure all about sea snakes. Have a great rest of your day.